It's interesting because I remember, I think I first heard, you know, the phrase and, you know, this concept being discussed around transgenderism being a fetish for men in any case, probably from Sheila Jeffries, who of course was talking about these things long before many were. Um, and now it, that's become, I think that's, it's almost, it's very close to being like a mainstream understanding that idea that a lot of these men in particular the men who are transitioning during middle age you know 40 50 60 um are auto gynophiles mm. um and of course this huge debate and controversy recently broke out over a man named debbie hayton mm -hmm. who lives in the uk um, and is, I've, I met him brief, briefly one time, but I don't actually know that much about him. Um, and he, you know, he's probably in his sixties or something like that. I think, is that right? Would you say? I, I don't know. I think probably approaching that. Yeah. Around yeah. that age group. And in any case, so he's married and he was recently interviewed by Andrew Doyle. And then you had him on your podcast. And I thought the interview that you did with him was really, really good. Actually, thank you for doing that. Um, and I just, I mean, this, this, you know, there's, I don't think that there's ever been like a cohesive movement against transgenderism for se, per se. There's always going to be debates about various issues, but can you sort of explain what the crux of that controversy was? You know, Andrew Doyle got really attacked online. I oh. didn't get very involved, so I sort of saw the sidelines of it and then left the internet. <laughs> um, and then uh, somebody, you know, like I think a bunch of people were attacked over platforming Divi uh -huh. to talk to him about uh -huh. transsexualism and his experience as a transsexual. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to interview him because I wanted to ask him some hard questions. Yeah. And I wanted to interview him so that I could put certain things to him, such as, do you consume sissy porn? Um, what happened to your sexual interest in yourself as time mm -hmm. goes on? What do you think about the fact that trans activists are um, saying, you know, poor Debbie, you know, don't be nasty to Debbie. So. I actually wanted to do a different kind of interview with him than, for example, Janice Turner, who is a friend and a colleague, right. had done in the Sunday Times, but she's a you know very different approach to me. Um, and of course, you know, the guns were out. It was Bindle's capitulating again, Bindle's a coward, Bindle sits down and you know, sucks the cock of autogynophiliac men. I mean, just really nasty stuff. Yeah. Um, but of course, these women don't come to this through feminism. They come to this, in my view, through, I mean, their single issue campaign, there's nothing wrong with that. And some of them are quite, actually quite deeply offensive and quite deeply homophobic and anti-lesbian, in my view. But anyway, I mean, the, the controversy was, began with Janice Turner, who's a journalist for the, uh, the Times newspaper. And Janice... Um, did a profile piece on Hayton, pegged to his book, which is just out, The Transsexual Apostle, I, Apostate, I think. Anyway, um, it's about his autogynophilia, which I think is very useful because I don't want to praise Hayton for saying I'm an autogynophiliac. I actually just want to actually add that to the store of information that we have about how these men come to you know, get signed off by psychiatrists and surgeons as bony fide women living as the opposite sex. I think it's, I think it's another piece of ammunition. Andrew Doyle, who again, I know, I like, he's a friend. Um, he's a liberal kind of free speech type of man, as you know. He had Hayton on his program. And I think that the uh, auto cue, the, the kind of, um, text that goes across our screens when we're watching an interview before it begins described Hayton as she. And so again, all the guns were out, um, you know, how could you platform this autogynophilia? Now, obviously Twitter is both real life and not real life. So what happens on there actually does happen to people. It is actually like somebody walking into a bar and screaming, you are a fucking cunt, you are a fucking raging dickhead. I'm going to rip your head off and shove it, you know, up your ass. But, you know, we know that it's 
behind a screen and we know that there's a lot of vitriol on those social media platforms that is quite unique to social media anyway andrew just got fed up with it left twitter for a short period of time set up his own substack and just wrote a piece then in unheard which i thought was a very useful piece saying there are some extremists that just want to shout um, about how no one's as pure as they are all this screaming of hold the line and never compromise mm. yeah if you'd actually been around for a long long time maybe for many years on your own where perhaps you're trying to talk with people reasonably to stop yourself from being cancelled every time you want to go to an event and talk about rape and domestic violence and other feminist work like the times I've been cancelled when I've been going to talk about the trafficking of women and girls including in Vancouver on the ticket that I'm transphobic you're going to try to do things to reach a compromise maybe there are some people listening to this that will never compromise. They will literally go to their death having never compromised and they will feel really good about it. But I have compromised, including doing things and saying things and talking to some people that I now wish I hadn't, mm. saying things that I now really, really wish I hadn't, being in a position where I felt completely and utterly powerless in relation to them, humiliated, embarrassed, just desperate to get out of there. And I just think there's nothing noble in being cruel and sadistic to those of us that have, no, not always held the line or been, or been 100% pure as they believe they have. Mm -hmm. The one shouting at Andrew, shouting at me, shouting at Janice. But at least we've actually never given up and have actually stayed in the fight for women's rights across the board and not just a single issue, that when that single issue perhaps is no longer as toxic or relevant because we've won the war, they won't be in it for the fight against rape, they won't be in it for the fight against trafficking of women, you know, where might they be? And so I think that's the problem, that hoo-ha was about saying, Hayton is a pervert, He's admitted he's a pervert. By platforming him, you are actually giving him a sexual thrill by, by having him on your podcast program. Um, purity is, wow, it's a luxury conversation. It really is. It's, you know, you can afford to be pure then you can afford to take a constant bashing, lose your job, lose your home, lose your friends, lose your marbles, but at least you've held the line. So I, I'm not I'm not very enamored with that kind of behavior. I'm really not. 